This is the Kitchen Table War Story Series, ground zero for the legendary tales of the mineral space. So Barry was this infamous South Texas land broker. And like I said, he was also my across the street neighbor growing up. And Barry growing up was like my cool, dirty uncle who would buy beer for me when my parents were out of town and I was having a party. And then he'd come over that night and drink it with us later after his wife and kids went to bed. Another thing about Barry that you got to know is that he could eat and he loved to eat the hottest shit ever. That was his calling card. And he would, you know, we would go to these wing challenges and different things and he would eat the, the wings and do all the challenges, no problem, get the t-shirts and the whole deal and just loved it. Thought it was his whole thing. And so I'm watching Man vs. Food and there's this place in San Antonio, uh, a, a biker burger bar called Chunkies. And Chunkies is this like, you know, it, it's on there this, and they have this burger. And so like, I basically like, hey, Barry, there's this burger challenge at Chunkies. It's like the hottest burger in the world. Uh, you know, I've watched this episode and the guy, the guy couldn't do it, but I bet you can. You want, you want to do this challenge? And of course he was into it. He was like, hell yeah, that's where we're going. Lunch at Chunky's. We'll go drink in the afternoon. We'll go Spurs game, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so just to give you an idea of what the challenge is, I went to the website. It's still there. I went to the website and downloaded it. The Four Horsemen is the name of the burger. Dubbed the hottest burger on the planet by Travel Channel's Man vs. Food. Four Horsemen Burger contains fresh jalapeno and serrano peppers, a habanero sauce, and the dreaded ghost pepper relish. The Four Horsemen Challenge Rules. 25 minutes to eat the burger. Allowed to eat and drink anything except for remedies, which is like milk and stuff like that. No restroom breaks, sharing, spitting, or double tasting. And if the burger is wi eaten within the 25 minutes, then a five minute waiting period begins and you can't use a napkin and you can't clean your face. And so you just sit there. And the last line, Good luck to any brave soul willing to take on the four horsemen. So, oh, and then notice, sorry, this is the best part. Notice a chuck bucket is provided, but use of it is an automatic disqualification. If the bucket is missed, a $20 charge fee is added. To the <laughs> oh, me, Barry, and like two or three of the other guys had the chunkies. It's outside of San Antonio off like 410, kind of rustic area, pretty cool thing. And, you know, we sit down and we get the thing. Barry signs the paper, orders his beer. 15 minutes later, the burger comes out. The staff starts coming out. Like, everyone's coming to watch this thing. And you're like, oh, shit, this, this might be really hot or something. You know, you're like, you can feel it in the air. So Barry digs in. First couple of bites, he's making comments like, Oh, it's not so much a burn, but more of a tingle on my lips and things like that. And then he braves on, and about halfway through the burger, you can tell he's starting to get phased, and then it's it's hot. You can see because like it's it's really he doesn't really phase, and I mean you can tell it's really hot. So at this point, halfway through the burger, Barry decides that the challenge is off, and that he's not gonna be able to eat it in 25 minutes, and that he wants a beer to drink with it, and you know blah blah blah. And so now that the challenge is off, I'm like, well, Barry, give me a bite. I want to buy this burger. And uh, he gives me a bite, and I shit you not, man. I took one bite of this burger. <laughs> Up on my head started to tingle, and it burned the whole way down. Like, I had just inhaled lava. Like, it was, to this day, I've never, never experienced anything like this. It was the hottest <laughs> shit ever. You know, I, I immediately after I get the bite, I tell Barry, I'm like, you don't have to do this. This is, this is too much. Like, this ain't. This in hot wings at Buffalo Wild Wings. This is for real. I don't want you to die. You know, <laughs> like, this shit's dangerously hot. It's, it's crazy. Like, I don't want you to die. And he's like, hell no, I got it. I'll, I'll get it down. Da, da, da. So he carries on. And after eating the first half out of the burger, now he's starting to make some comments about, well, this might be the third hottest thing I've ever eaten in my life. Uh, and he's like talking about the hottest thing being some steak sauce in Argentina and, and I'm pretty sure the other one was like a raw Carolina Reaper pepper or something ridiculous and you know three quarters away we're through now and he's completely rocked completely rocked sweat like undoing his shirt just not looking good 
And I really felt bad about it because I was the one that organized it. And it could very well be the person that kills Barry. And I'm, what am I going to say to his wife and daughter when Barry kills over and dies here at Chunky's Burgers from eating this stupid hamburger? So Barry does it, eats all of it, and is just completely wrecked. And he's asking the waiters, and you know, their waiters are all out there laughing, everyone's giggling at this, and they're and he's now asking, he's like, where's the closest convenience store? I need a diet coke and abysmal. And like for some reason, that was his cure-all was Pepto Abysmal and Diet Coke. And so he and then it, now and then and then he's like going through, and you can tell he's just scattered. He's like, Oh shit, I'm I forgot the tickets to the game. We got to go to the AT&T Center. And he was like, y'all go there. I'll meet y'all there. I'm going to get a Pepto-Bismol and a Diet Coke. Me and this other guy get in the car. So we drive to the AT&T Center. And, like, we're talking on the way over there. We're like, dude, I'm worried he's going to, like, pass out driving or die, have a heart attack. Like, we just don't know. It's that bad. And, you know, we just knew he was messed up, and we'd never seen him like this. And so we, we get to the AT&T Center, and we're waiting on Barry. And this is like for a while goes by. And so then we're like starting to call him, text him, nothing. He's not answering, none of that. And finally, here he comes like walking up, limping. Like, I mean, you know, pale as a ghost, chugging a bottle of Pepto-Bismol with a huge diet coat. He's like leaning on the walls. I mean, he's just wrecked. And uh, I mean, he can barely stand. Get our tickets. And then we decide we're going to go back to one of the other Lamin's grandparents' house who lives in San Antonio. And they're out of town. And so we're like, we'll go over there. We'll get some work done, drink some beers, whatever. And, uh, get, you know, get ready for the game tonight. So we're heading over there. And, and Barry, being Barry, he doesn't have a laptop. He doesn't get emails on his phone. And so he's like, I got to go to Kinko's and check my email. That's what he used to do. He's just check his email on the road at Kinko's. Well, an hour or so goes by. We're starting to get worried again. And then, you know, next thing you know, the phone rings. And it's Barry. And he, all we can get out of him is just says, Come and get me. I'm on the floor at the Kinko's bathroom and hurry. <laughs> so we like get in the car, haul us over to Kinko's, and we find him on the bathroom floor uh, at Kinko's. His jeans are at his ankles, his BBDs are in the trash can, and he's basically like passed out over the toilet, ass in the air. We're like picking him up off the floor, and he's still mumbling something about third hottest thing I've ever eaten. <laughs> And he's still not willing to admit defeat, but at this point, like, we're pretty worried, but now we're starting to laugh and be like, all right, maybe he's not going to die, but, like, we're cracking up because he can barely walk. We're, you know, we're, like, soldier carrying him, arm arm over each one of us out of Kinko's. Like, people are staring at us in Kinko's, like, what are these guys doing? So we get Barry back to my buddy's grandparents' house, get him on the couch, and he's, like, writhing in pain, grinding his boots into my buddy's grandparents' couch, and like making those crazy noises, like, and doing all this while occasionally just throwing out third hottest thing I've ever had. Like we're sitting in the kitchen drinking beer, just like literally cracking up. Okay, it's time to head to the Spurs game. Me and the other land guy asked Barry if he can make it. And he tells us, you know, I'm, I'm out for now, but I'll be there at halftime. We're like, okay, Barry, we'll see you. We'll see you tomorrow. So we take our time, you know, take our tickets, head down there. And, you know, and to be honest, uh, I can't believe we actually left him there like that because he could have easily just died on that couch. But we were we were going to the Spurs game. But yeah, so we, we go to the game, we're drinking beers, having a good time. It's all the landman. And then sure enough, at halftime, here comes Barry. Limping in, but has a huge grin on his face. And I mean, you would have thought it was the second coming of Christ by the look on all of our faces. Like, no freaking way this guy is here. Sure enough, he walks right up, looks all of us in the eye. I told you I'd be here at halftime. What are y'all staring at? <laughs> and then he to drink beer and hang out with us. He's still spanked, but he's, you know, he's there. And, you know, at the end of the night, I asked him, I said, Barry, be honest. Was that the hottest thing you've ever eaten? And what do you think his response was? Nope. Third hottest thing I've ever eaten. So that is the story of Barry and the Four Horsemen.